All right, we are here today. Uh, we have an excellent interview with uh, John Horn, and uh, we just wanted to pick his brain about digital marketing and online world. Uh, John, tell us a little about yourself and how you kind of got started. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Justin, Brian, really a pleasure to be here. Thanks very much for having me on. Uh, like you said, my name is John Horn, and I'm the CEO of Stub Group. And here at Stub Group, we are a digital advertising agency. So basically, that means we work with all types of different companies, e-commerce, business to business, local services, you name it. And we are helping them connect with and find new customers online. So we work with all the, the major advertising platforms, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, and so forth. And we're all about finding that profitable ROI and uh, making money for our clients. Okay, very cool. What platforms are you seeing like the best results on right now? Google is kind of always the 800 pound gorilla in the space that we operate in. So um, Google search campaigns, Google shopping campaigns for e-commerce clients, those are often usually having the best ROI for, for many of our clients. Facebook as well, though, is certainly a big player, um, especially for more of our, say, awareness oriented clients where they're trying to create brand recognition or you know, push out to find new customers that maybe aren't searching for them right now, but are a good fit for them uh, audience-wise. So Google and Facebook are definitely big ones, but Amazon as well is also somewhere where we're really growing and putting a lot of focus because it's still kind of the wild, wild west when it comes to the advertising side of things. They're figuring things out and there's still a lot of opportunity. And then as well, just as a marketplace, obviously, <laughs> Amazon is is incomparable in terms of its its usage and being a destination for people looking to purchase products. One of the uh, one of the big things that we focus on in our company, and like I said before, we had started. You know, uh, we work with one of the largest crypto YouTubers on, on the planet, so we deal a lot with cryptocurrency. And I know that getting embedded into some of the platforms that you just spoke of has been a huge challenge for us. Uh, only because, you know, they don't want to do advertising for cryptocurrency. There's a lot of scams that have come up, you know, especially on YouTube. Uh, you know, it's just, it's terrible. Had, do you work with other crypto companies? Do you kind of have some insight onto, you know, maybe how to fast track this for other companies and, and other influencers and stuff that are in the space that are trying to get some ads going to, you know, to boost some revenue, do some sponsored content, stuff like that? We do. Yeah, we've had lots of crypto advertisers reach out to us looking for help, uh, partly because we specialize in Google policies and really understanding them and how to apply them and, and work within Google systems uh, and Facebook as well, but, but Google in particular to try and be able to advertise in some of those more sensitive niches where there are a lot of restrictions. So we do work with some crypto advertisers. Um, we have a, a crypto big, uh, we have a, a crypto ATM uh, that we work with. They've got a bunch of ATM locations where they sell crypto. Uh, we've done some work with a hedge fund investing in the crypto space, some other clients as well. And it is possible to advertise in the crypto space if you meet certain criteria. So Google has pretty strict policies. You have to be able to get certain certifications and meet certain requirements to be allowed in the platform. And then even then, there's still algorithmically is a lot of red flagging that goes on. And sometimes you'll have to just keep going back and forth with our team at Google saying, hey, nope, we're cool. We're not doing this. You know, take a look at this manually, stuff like that. So some crypto advertisers we are able to help. And then some just don't meet those criteria. And we have to you know, encourage them to look at other platforms. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So what got you into the uh, digital marketing space? How long have you been doing this for? I've been marketing for a long time. Uh, with Stub Group in particular, it's been, I think we've been around for almost eight years at this point. And the reason we started Stub Group back in the day, uh, my two the partners and co-founders in the company who started things out was they came from a long, uh, long background in marketing, uh, digital marketing in particular. And they were seeing the writing on the wall, especially when it comes to pay-per-click, which is what we do right now, which is you know, the concept of actually paying each time someone clicks on your ad. That's the main model that Google and Facebook and Microsoft use. And back, you know, whatever, 2012, 13, when we were starting out, there were already a ton of people using Google, using Facebook for advertising, but the market was underserved when it came to experts who really 
understood how to use those platforms and could work with companies to help them figure it out and run profitable campaigns. So we saw this this market need and also saw just an incredibly expanding market with the shift from traditional ad spend over to digital ad spend, which has been happening since then and is still continuing to happen. So saw a market need and also just a big um, growing market. So we jumped in there and really just started figuring it out ourselves, running our own campaigns, working with clients, figuring out what strategies and tactics work, what what doesn't work, getting access to teams at Google and Facebook to help us with those things. And then it's just been a journey since then of figuring it out and growing. And every day is a, a new challenge and a new adventure. Yeah. Well, it's, it's fun to hear you say that it's a, a new adventure. Obviously, you know, one of the things that we talk about on our channel pretty much all the time is, you know, having turning your passion into a profit. So you got to like what you do, right? So if you consider every day an adventure, you're obviously having a good time. Would you consider the digital marketing your passion or is it working with others your passion? Like what, what is it inside of your daily routine or function that you consider to be a true passion of yours? I'd say the thing that most excites me is seeing companies and the people who work for those companies see success. So with digital marketing, digital advertising, we're able to run these campaigns that drive tons of value. And honestly, we've helped build companies from very, very small startups into large organizations by helping them with their, their marketing. Certainly, we're not the only piece of that puzzle, um, but being a big piece of that puzzle and helping them grow. So that's that's what gets me up in the morning is being able to see, oh, we're doing a good job for our clients. We are helping them put bread on the table for their employees. And also, I'm putting bread on the table for our employees as we you know, see that success alongside of them. What's your biggest uh, success story that you can remember of a client that you've helped, if you can share? Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of them. One of the ones that comes to mind, just because it's more recent, honestly, is um, earlier this year, we onboarded a new client in the uh, the women's clothing space. They actually, they came to us because they had some Google policy issues that accidentally hit and we helped them work through those, figure those out and get their advertising back on, on track there. But at the same time, we also said, hey, uh, let's look at Facebook. You guys, they, they tried Facebook a, a while before, hadn't done a lot with it, uh, hadn't seen a great success. And so just kind of left to be for a while, moved on to Google. We said, hey, let's let's invest some budget into Facebook and see what we can do. And within that first month of getting them on Facebook and starting to drive revenue, we drove them, I think, a little over $180,000 in revenue at, I think, around 13x ROAS in you know, 30 days from, from launch. Um, so that, was, that, that got the team <laughs> excited and happy. We don't uh, typically see you know, results that quickly, but that's a fun, a fun story from earlier this year. Cool. Oh, that's cool. I'd like to hear... Uh, the the successes and then um, you know obviously you know you've said you, it's it's a passionate thing that you're enjoying that you do. I'm curious for uh, for you guys in the crypto space, what platforms or methods are you seeing work right now to get that message out? I mean, honestly, we're doing a lot of organic stuff right now, so we're posting on as many social platforms as we can. Um, but then we're also doing. I think we just started doing paid ads on um, on Facebook. I think we've got approved to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, it, it, which is also Instagram as well. But so, yeah, so we're that's still kind of a new area for us. We we actually recently hired someone to do the ads because we're not experts in that. Um, I know it's an ever changing thing. So, um, but yeah, mostly mostly we just do organic stuff right now. Awesome. Yeah, no, ever changing, a hundred percent. That's that's one of the. Um, the blessings and curses of the digital advertising industry is things are always changing. It feels like every every day, every couple of days, we see a new announcement from Google or Facebook or someone or our team will reach out to us from those platforms and say, hey, here's something new coming down the pike. And so we got to figure it out, analyze it, explain it to our clients, you know, and then just start testing it too and, and letting the data dictate um, how it impacts performance. So it's, it's, it's fun because it keeps things, um, it adds variety to life. And it's also good job security, honestly, because yeah. um, we have the time, we get paid to figure it all out and learn these things. And the clients we work with, you know, they're trying to run a business. They can't spend their whole day researching Google. So it's, it's a, um, a blessing and a curse, as I said. <laughs> yeah. 
Are, are any of those companies just absolutely terrible to work with? I know that, you know, you kind of rely on, on them for your business, but, you know, you hear the stories of, you know, the companies like Facebook and, you know, Zuckerberg and, you know, Google, like, you know, they are just the monster in the industry. Like, are any of them are just like terrible people to work with? Do you, would you even want to answer that question? I would say certainly not terrible people to work with. You know, the, the people that we get to work with there are usually great, genuine people who are looking to help us succeed. Um, you know, the, the account managers, the agency team members that we have to work with are awesome. There are certainly uh, sometimes realities of uh, the processes that are in place that those team members have to work with that if I were there, I would do things very differently. Um, and some of that's just the reality of how massive those companies are and how scaled they are and move fast and break things <laughs> being the mantra too, where sometimes we have to deal with those broken things and kind of figure out how to pick up the pieces. Um, so there's certainly things I would change if I were, uh, you know, if I had the opportunity to have input there. Um, but there's also a lot of great people at those companies that truly care about the, uh, the clients they're working with and um, are looking to, to make things better. That's great. What's your uh, opinion on like attention being like, the number one asset right now like what like i i feel like i try to explain this to people and they don't realize it sometimes but like getting attention whether it's organically or through ads is like you know it's super valuable and like you even talked about it in the beginning like you know some of these companies are running ads to just get rois but some of them are also running it to get brand recognition and you can't really put a number on that how, how do you explain that to your clients when you're like, hey, you know, it's important to build your brand and get more attention? Like, wh where do you, where's the crossover there? Like, how do you explain that to them? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's, it's definitely an evolving conversation because we're always trying to balance attention with how is that attention obviously turning into profitability in their ROI? ROI. And there's, there's, always, there's always the companies who reach out and say, hey, we want tons of Facebook followers and Facebook likes. And so we have to talk to them and say, well, why? What, you know, what are we going to do with that? That's not money in your pocket. What's our strategy for turning that into money in your profit? Or not in your profit, in your pocket. And just having a Facebook like, having an impression, eyeballs on your ad, doesn't translate into those KPIs and actions that we're trying to drive. So we definitely encourage our clients to think through strategies and we work with them on strategies to how do we capture that attention and then turn that into profitability, turn that into uh, direct communication also with their customers. Because one of the realities of uh, Facebook, for example, Instagram is you're at the mercy of those platforms when you want to reach out to even your followers and people who've liked your page because you know, they tweak the algorithm and say, oh, no, you, you're only going to get a certain percentage of people who followed you are actually going to see your posts unless you, you know, pay to, um, to get those posts out there. And so there's a lot of value still in having that audience and having that attention, but we're also encouraging clients, hey, let's get direct communication with those customers. Let's get them on an email list. Let's get them to your website, engaging with your content in ways that aren't fully reliant upon those platforms, Google or Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, so that when that platform goes away or changes a policy and you know, some new platform comes out, which is always happening, um, you know, we don't, we don't do much MySpace advertising these days. <laughs> um, you still have that one-on-one that -on -one connection with your customer and you can still communicate with them regardless of you know, what what platforms are the uh, the top and most popular platforms these days yeah for sure and that's super important i mean we see it that's why we're so diversified on several platforms because there's you never know what's going to happen you're at the mercy of the centralized social media giants coming the, the our overlords <laughs> yeah exactly but that's what that's why crypto is so interesting too a lot of that's going to change a lot of how this works and and but it's gonna it's still gonna take time that's for sure but, yeah yeah with, there's, any, with any of the decentralized social media companies we haven't put much time into that yet uh we're still focused on kind of the 80 20 20 rule of, of where people are and where we can most effectively spend the ad dollars for our clients um that said we're always we we do like poking around testing new things um so we've we've had some scenarios where we'll have a client reach out who for whatever reason, they're not a good fit for, say, Google or Facebook, maybe not even because of the vertical they're in, but because they're just going after such a niche audience. Maybe they're you know, business to business and they need a very specific type of person. And there's only 
100, 200 people out there, we will explore other things like, say, Reddit or Quora, or there's a lot of different places where you can figure out, hey, my niche that we're going after, that's where they spend time. Um, and maybe there's not a ton of those people, but you can have a super profitable business, obviously, going after that niche. And so we'll definitely explore some of those um, less mainstream platforms for clients. Um, anything else that you would want us to ask you so that you can uh, get out anything you want? <laughs> Yeah, I would just say you know, if anybody who's um, who's engaging with us right now, watching watching this conversation, if you are running a, a business or you're exploring getting into business and you're looking to connect with customers online, um, I'd love to have a conversation with you or one of my team members. We'll typically, when someone reaches out to us, we'll have some initial conversations, do an evaluation of existing advertising that you're doing, or of if you're not doing advertising, kind of what the what the market looks like, what the possibilities are out there. We'll do that for free just to see, hey, would we be a good fit for each other? Could we help you out with that? So yeah, anybody who wants to have that type of conversation, um, hit me up through LinkedIn, John Horn, or our website, stubgroup.com. We'd love to explore that further. Very Perfect. cool. Well, we'll put all that down in the description uh, for the YouTube and the, and the podcast version. So if anybody needs that information, it'll be down there for you. Uh, feel free to look up John. We appreciate your time today, man. This was a, it was a great conversation. I certainly learned a little bit about digital marketing. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about it, but, uh, but I feel like I know more today after talking with you. Yeah, yeah sure. thanks so much for having me on. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. We'll, uh, we'll check back in with you in a few months. Sounds great. Take care. Thank you, John. Have a good one. You too.